For some, this Super Bowl's highlight won't be the snacks, the beer, or even the game. It will be the ice. At Ice Sculpture Designs, the nation's second largest ice carving company, they've made more than 30 sculptures for game day parties. And this is a slow year. There is something about ice. Whether cut, cubed, crushed, cloudy or clear, its crystals glisten and glow like a thousand tiny prisms. It can evoke old Hollywood glamour, like in this commercial. From ice trays in every shape and color, to the two-inch cubes at Rocks Bar in Chicago, or pomegranate ice cubes at MGM Grand's Rouge Bar in Las Vegas, ice is hot. If you go to the boutique cocktail bars, which are kind of at the cutting edge of drink technology these days, they're all about the ice. And they're keeping uh, all their glasses frozen, and everything is cold, 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 cold. And you know, that's not such a bad thing because it makes for a better drink. But it wasn't always this way. David Wondrich, drinks editor at Esquire and author of the book Imbibe, says ice used to be for a chosen few. Ice was always something that rich people had in Europe, going back even to, to Roman times. They would bring snow down from the mountains around Rome to cool the emperor's wine. According to Wondrich, we're in the midst of a great American ice age. The United States is the world's largest consumer of ice. It's all thanks to this man, Frederick Tudor. He brought ice to the masses in the early 19th century, shipping blocks from Boston to saloons across the country. The first time his salesman would come in and say, we'll give you some free ice, sell your ice drinks for the same price as the warm ones and see what happens. And everybody would want ice drinks from then on. And it cost pennies a pound. With ice came cocktail shakers, strainers, and then the straw. This is an American innovation uh, because I suspect we had bad dentistry. You know? <laughs> uh, and you didn't want those ice cubes hitting your teeth. Not for some. Chew on this. There's even a website, icechewing.com. That's where we found this woman, Stephanie Broadbent, a self-described ice snob. Now see, I'm not an ice connoisseur kind of like you. No, there's not very many of us. It doesn't taste too bad. It doesn't really taste like anything. Right, but and that's okay. It's, it is a little it's crunchy. It's the texture, it's the experience. If ice in your glass isn't to your taste, you can always go where ice is your glass. At minus five, which opened in Las Vegas last fall, there's no way to avoid the ice. No ice cubes. No ice cubes. You don't need ice cubes in here. <laughs> minus five isn't just the name of the bar, it's the temperature on the thermostat in Celsius. New Zealander Craig Ling is the bar's owner. This is like the Rolls Royce of a, of a freezer, so to speak. The mechanical aspects of it is so different to you know, any freezer in a restaurant or a nightclub or, or a fridge. Well, cheers. Oh, cheers. We'll drink to that. And no matter how you like your frosty cold beverage, drink up. Ice is cool.